You know, I get this question very often. What type of diet should someone with a genetic cholesterol problem have? And I'm talking about familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, you would logically think that if someone has a problem with cholesterol, okay, and with this condition, you have like 50% of the LDL receptors than a normal person. So that means you're going to have a buildup of LDL. So logically, it makes sense to just start reducing your cholesterol and your saturated fats, especially, right? Makes total sense. And this is something that has been recommended for probably, I don't know, 80 years. It's your standard recommendations from most medical professionals. But there's a fascinating research paper that I want to summarize right here that actually blew my mind. And I'm going to kind of give you the simple version, and then you can click down below and read it for yourself. Of course, check with your doctor and don't come off any medications because of me. There is extremely poor evidence of recommending lowering your cholesterol and your saturated fats for the better outcomes if you have this genetic cholesterol problem. Despite these recommendations, lowering saturated fats and cholesterol to people with genetic cholesterol problems, they still have a significant increased risk of dying from a heart attack. And the name of this research paper is called Dietary Recommendations for Familial Hypercholesterolemia. And when they mention evidence-free zone, they're talking about a severe lack of evidence. 85% of the population who has genetic problems with their cholesterol don't even know they have it. And I'm definitely not telling you that having high LDL or high cholesterol is not going to affect your heart in a negative way. I'm just sharing a new viewpoint that you really seriously need to look at if you have high cholesterol. And I really just want you to start questioning if lowering your cholesterol and the saturated fat in your diet is the best strategy you should be focusing on. They also quoted a additional study that compared one group consuming low fat, okay? The other group consuming low carb, and both groups had this genetic cholesterol problem. And the group that lowered their carbohydrate had a significantly lowered risk of dying from a heart attack. And this is despite, okay, despite consuming three times the amount of saturated fat. So in other words, the low carb group consumed three times more fat than the dietary low fat group, which is just fascinating. But if someone's going to start lowering their uh, dietary fat, okay, and their cholesterol, usually they're going to replace it with more carbs. So let me just summarize a couple of things about this study. The current dietary guidelines for management of coronary heart disease in familial hypercholesterolemia is based on outdated and unsupported information. Number two, there's no evidence to support the recommendations which are given to these individuals with this cholesterol genetic problem of consuming a low saturated fat diet or a low cholesterol diet. Number three, a low carbohydrate diet was found to significantly improve cardiovascular disease biomarkers. And we're talking about these indicators like obesity, high blood pressure, coronary artery calcification test, which is a really good indicator to tell what's going on inside. Also high insulin or insulin resistance, inflammation or inflammatory biomarkers. And then we have high triglycerides and high glucose as in diabetes. You see, those factors are so much more important uh, than just trying to lower your cholesterol. Another factor that you should really look at uh, through an advanced lipid profile test to look at your, your LDL, okay, to see what type of particle size that you have. There's two different types of LDL. Uh, one type uh, is the small, dense uh, particle size, and the other is the large, buoyant particle size. And you want the large, buoyant um, particle size because the small, dense particles can lodge into the inside of the artery and create a problem. And it just so happens that a high carbohydrate diet is associated with these small, dense LDLs. Those are the pathogenic ones that you have to be aware of. The other thing to focus more on would be the clotting factors to see if you clot more. So unfortunately, that's kind of downplayed sometimes when it actually is a way more significant risk factor than just having high LDL. 
And another point they mentioned in the summary section of this study is that there is sufficient rationale for conducting clinical trials to assess the effects of a low carb diet on familial hypercholesterolemia individuals with insulin resistance, okay? Which I think is a really, really important point. If you have a genetic problem with cholesterol and you manage the risk factors, obesity, insulin resistance, the high blood pressure, and all these other things, by being on a low carb diet, your outcomes are gonna be so much better. But to get the entire medical profession on board, we need these clinical trials. So, and this is just my opinion, instead of focusing on lowering the saturated fat, okay, lowering your cholesterol, you should be focusing on lowering your carbohydrates. Now, this flies right into the face of the medical profession. This is definitely not the consensus. It's definitely an alternative view. And all I'm asking you to do is to take a look at it, look at the research for yourself, and then test things out. Go on a ketogenic diet, and then go get your, your values tested. And then go on the other diet that everyone's recommending, and then you compare the results to see what's best for you. But the point is that we assume that this research is already done and it's the science is settled, but it's, it's not settled. So if you have this genetic problem, there's a couple of things that you really need to focus on, right? Number one, going on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet, because the biggest risk factor for this condition is heart problems, right? So the healthy version of the ketogenic diet has the ingredients that support the inside lining of the heart. I would also recommend doing intermittent fasting, which will lower insulin because going in the high carb diet creates more inflammation in the arteries. And we're trying to prevent a heart attack, okay? Not create it. A couple uh, key nutrients that I would recommend would be, um, and this is based on some, some pretty powerful research, uh, extracts of red yeast, and then another one called polycosinol. Now that's, believe it or not, from sugarcane, but there's no sugar in it, okay? But it's apparently it's a, a good combination with the red yeast to help uh, keep the cholesterol in check. Niacin, not niacinamide, is another good thing to take to help regulate cholesterol. And of course, exercise is important. Uh, garlic can help thin the blood and prevent the stickiness to the platelets. And then the last thing that I would recommend is tocotrienols. That's a type of vitamin E that really supports the inside layer of your arteries to prevent against oxidation, prevent against scarring and placking. And um, it's probably one of the best antioxidants for the heart, tocotrienols. Don't buy it with the tocopherols, get it as a standalone. Other points in addition to that would be to realize that steroids and stress can increase cholesterol. And I'm talking about the bad type, okay? Also birth control pills or estrogen therapy can increase your cholesterol. And of course, any type of sugar will do it. Smoking will greatly worsen this situation. And of course, alcohol and diuretics can also worsen the situation as well as beta blockers. Now, like I said before, like 85% of the population doesn't even know they have this condition, but there are a few indicators that can give it away other than getting a test, okay? One is these little fat deposits on your Achilles tendons, okay? And they also can uh, form on your wrists as well as on your eyelids. They're called xanthomas. It's basically cholesterol building up in the tissues. You can also have a condition called uh, arcus senilis, which is a, a little whitening around the iris of your eye. So again, check with your doctor before taking in any of these recommendations. I just wanted to create this video, food for thought, um, something to look at, something to question. And if you have not seen my video on niacin, that's a really good one to get the full picture. And I put that up right here.